Hello, my name is Hamza Fawzi. I'm a lecturer in the mathematics of information uh, in the Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics at the University of Cambridge. And today, today I would like to talk to you about uh, geometry in high dimensions and how, um, how geometry in high dimensions can be used in the mathematics of information. Okay. So, so in our everyday life, uh, we deal with uh, information. Okay, so uh, whenever you, you browse the web, uh, you see images. Uh, okay, so this is a form of information that you, that you have access to. You see text, you see video, you see audio. This is all different types of information. And mathematics of information has to do with uh, different questions, um, like how do we efficiently store and compress this information? How do we efficiently transmit this information? Okay. How do we classify this information? So think, for example, of uh, Google image search. Uh, you type in a certain query, and Google has a way of um, uh, displaying for you all the images that correspond to, to your query. Okay? So uh, Google has a certain way uh, to uh, classify, to be able to say whether the a certain image is the image of a cat, of a dog, of a plane, of a car, and so on and so forth. Okay, so there are certain mathematical algorithms underlying these uh, information processing tasks, and this is really the goal of mathematics of information. Okay, so today uh, what I would like to do is to give you a very brief uh, idea of the mathematical techniques that are needed for uh, these, these uh, different tasks, and in particular I will be focusing on the question of classification, which is this Google image search question that I mentioned. Okay, so uh, since we're focusing on images, uh, let's first understand how is an image stored on a computer. Okay, how do we really store, how, how do we store an image? So an image is very simply stored just as a sequence, as just a sequence of numbers. Okay, so let's, uh, let's think about the image that you see in this slide. Okay, this is a grayscale image, uh, a black and white image. Uh, so an image is, consists of a certain number of pixels, okay? Uh, so let's say this is a one megapixel image, so it has about a million pixels, okay? And each pixel has a certain grayscale value that is between zero and let's say 255. So zero stays, is for black, 255 is for white, and values in between correspond to a certain, uh, a certain grayscale level. Okay, so this image is very simply uh, represented on a computer as a sequence of numbers giving you the uh, grayscale value of each pixel. Okay, so, so this is really how an image is stored on a computer at a very basic level. Okay, so note that uh, this representation is, you can say, extremely dry. There is no meaning whatsoever. Uh, just a sequence of numbers. Uh, there is absolutely no understanding, no description that uh, this image, let's say there is some water in here, there is cloud, there is a sky, and so on and so forth. Um, this is uh, very, um, this, uh, this semantic information is absolutely not present in the way an image uh, is represented in a, in a computer. Okay? And the whole idea, the whole difficulty is how um, the, uh, is how do we actually uh, translate or how do we extract semantic information from this uh, mathematical representation? And how do we know uh, what this image really contains in such a way that we are able to answer the query of, of a user who is, say, who say is, is, is searching for um, specific images? Okay, so this is how an image is represented on a computer. So in order to do the classification task I mentioned, in order to be able to process this information, it will be uh, very useful and very fruitful to have a mathematical, um, uh, to interpret this, this sequence of numbers in a certain mathematical way in order to be able to apply mathematical operations that we are used. This is what I would like to explain to you now. Okay, so really uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to interpret an image as, as some vector in a high dimensional space. Okay, and before I talk about high dimensional space, let me just briefly talk about geometry in two and three dimensions, which is something that you know of. Okay, so let's remember what's a vector in two dimensions. So a vector in two dimensions is just, um, uh, uh, just a, 
a coordinate, so uh, a vector v, I can just think of it as v1, v2, where v1 and v2 are, are two numbers. Okay, and I have certain number, I, I, I have some operations on, on these vectors, so the operations that I will need um, in this very uh, short talk uh, are the following operations that you can see here. So uh, the dot product is an operation on two vectors, so that takes two vectors and uh, outputs a number out of these two vectors. Okay, so u dot v is u1 v1 plus u2 v2. Here u and v are two vectors in two dimensions, and this will output a number. Um, and if this number is equal to zero, we call these two vectors orthogonal. And if it is non-zero, they're non they're non-orthogonal, and in general gives us um, a measure of the angle between the two. Uh, I mean, appropriately in uh, I mean, if u and v are, are normalized. Uh, the length of a vector, the magnitude, if you want another word for magnitude, uh, is the square root of the inner product of u with itself. So the, the, the inner product of u with itself is u1 squared plus u2 squared. You take the square root of this, uh, this will give you the magnitude of the vector. Okay? So this is uh, uh, vectors in two dimensions. Uh, now, if I think about vectors in high dimension, let's think about the image uh, that I had in the previous slide. I want to think of this as a vector in one million dimensions, where each uh, intensity, um, grayscale intensity of a pixel is a component of my vector. Okay? So, um, okay, so here you can think of your, the U here as being a certain image. So u1 is going to be the intensity of the first pixel, u2 is going to be the intensity of the second pixel, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I have about a million components. Let's say v is another image, I have a million components. So I can take the inner product of these two images, or of these two vectors, and it's going to have the same formula exactly as in the previous slide when I was dealing with dimension two. So it's going to be u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus up to plus u dvd. And the magnitude of a vector u or a vector v is just the square root of u dot u, okay? Uh, this is really just geometry in d dimensions at a very basic level, okay? Now, um, let's try to see how we can use these two very simple operations and this uh, geometric way of thinking, if you want, uh, in order to be able to solve this classification problem. Okay, and the classification problem that I will be looking at is something a little bit simpler than the Google image search I talked about, but still it's very related. And it's the question of recognizing digits. Okay, so let's say um, you are presented with, uh, with um, some handwritten uh, digits and you have to decide what, what is the uh, digit that is written. Okay, so you have to decide, for example, that the one the top left one, that's a three, and then that's a six, and then that's an eight, and a one, and so on, and, and so forth. And the difficulty of this, of this problem is that um, there is no unique way. In fact, there are infinite number of ways of writing a three. Each one of us has a different way of writing a three. Each one of us has a different way of, of writing a six, and a five, and so on, and so forth. Okay, and there is no way to be able to store all this information. Okay, so I want an automatic way. Um, uh, to, to, uh, to decide, so I want a mathematical algorithm that given the image, uh, given let's say a scan of um, the handwritten uh, digit, I want to be able to decide what is this, 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 this digit. Okay, and this is something that is very practical. In fact, this uh, algorithm that I will describe to you in, in, in a few slides, uh, a version of it, or a more sophisticated version of it, is used uh, today in uh, in ATMs, in order to be able to decide what is the amount written on a, on a check. Okay, whenever you want to cash a check, um, there is an algorithm that will automatically read what is the amount of the check. Okay, so um, okay, so this is really our task: is to is to uh, is to classify digits. And uh, again, I'm going to just even simplify uh, slightly further. Instead of deciding uh, digits from one to 10, I'm just going to uh, uh, consider the question of deciding uh, whether a digit is the image of a one or the image of a five. Okay, here really numbers one and five, I chose arbitrarily. It could have been two and three or one and nine. What if, I mean, I just chose one and five arbitrarily. Uh, so, so now let's talk a bit about the details of the problem. 
So um, I'm going to assume that each, each image that you give me, so the image of a digit, uh, is an image that is 28 by 28, so that's 784 pixels. Okay, so I'm going to, each image is going to be a vector living in a space of dimension 784. Okay, so remember, it's going to be a sequence of numbers, so 784 numbers, and the task is really to decide whether these numbers, um, these grayscale numbers, correspond to, uh, semantically correspond to a 1 or to a 5. Okay, so let's now go back to uh, geometry. Uh, let's adopt a geometric point of view. So let us... Um, Let's assume that the screen that you see here is this 784 dimensional space. Okay, of course I cannot draw such a space, but let's just imagine that this is the space that you have. And so um, each point in this space corresponds to a 28 by 28 pixel image. And in this here, what I've done is that I've just put schematically uh, some images of ones and some, some images of fives. So the idea, uh, the geometric idea is really that these, the vectors corresponding to images of fives will be close together and the images corresponding to the images of, uh, images corresponding to a digit of one will be close to each other. And now what I would like to do is to find a way to be able, is to find a way to classify uh, ones and fives. And uh, the very simple idea is to, um, uh, that I'm going to present now is to use what we call linear classification. So what is linear classification? Linear classification simply looks for a certain vector w, okay, that will define uh, a line in 2D, or uh, if I want to use a more fancy word in high dimension, that's called the hyperplane, okay? So something that will separate the ones from the fives, okay? So in other words, if I stay in mathematically, what I would like is to find a certain vector w, such that the inner product of w with the image of a five, is um, uh, is positive, and the the inner product of W with the image of a one is always negative. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so this is really the the goal. So um, and so now, if I can find such a W, then I can. Uh, now you give me a new image, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute the inner product of W with this new image. And if what I get is something that is positive, I'm going to declare that the image that you give me is the image of a five. And if the inner product is negative, I'm going to say that the image that you gave me is the image of a one. Okay, it's as simple as that. So now obviously the whole question is how do I construct such a W? Okay, uh, how do I construct such a W? It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really an, a non, not, not an easy task to do this. And this is not something that a human can do. Uh, so if I were to tell you, uh, uh, please write down a vector uh, W of dimension 784, such that the inner product with all fives is positive, the inner product of, of all ones is negative, uh, this is something that uh, no one can do. I, I, I think so. Uh, at least I cannot do. Uh, so, so what we're going to do uh, is that we're going to ask the computer uh, to do it uh, for us. And, um, and we're going to adopt what we call a data-driven approach. So um, we're going to collect uh, images of fives from, from a certain number of people, like the one I, I showed you here and the, the ones that you can see on the screen. And I'm going to collect a certain number of ones. And I'm going to ask the computer to search for a vector w whose inner product is positive with these samples of fives that I collected and with these samples of ones that I collected. Okay, and then we're going to formulate what we call an optimization problem, a formal mathematical optimization problem. So, um, uh, so really, uh, the variable here, uh, we're looking for a certain w, such that the inner product with the x size, so x, x size are the images of five that I have collected. Uh, I want this to be greater than one. So let's forget about the ti's for a second now. Assume the ti's are just equal to zero. Uh, I want the inner product of W with the X size is, is bigger than one. And uh, whenever it X size the image of a five, and I want the inner product of W with the, uh, of w with the X size is less than minus one whenever the X size the image of a one. Okay, so uh, 
what are the TIs? Um, just going to briefly explain. So uh, uh, the reason we have the TIs is that we cannot uh, assume that such a W will always exist. In fact, very likely it will not exist. I cannot find a W such that that will have positive inner product with uh, the images of fives, uh, of fives and a negative inner product with the images of ones. So I need to allow for some slack or, or for, uh, for some misclassification. And this is exactly what the TIs uh, are doing. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm putting some slack here, but I'm also at the same time imposing that I would like the slack to be as small as possible. So, so in other words, we, for, we have formulated the, uh, the learning problem. So uh, the classification problem here is an optimization problem. Uh, it's, it's really a mathematical optimization problem. I have a certain formula um, uh, that I want to uh, minimize. Um, I have a certain function that I want to minimize subject to some constraints. Okay, and so uh, now enter you, the area of mathematical optimization, which is really actually my, my area of research is uh, the question is how do I take this mathematical, very concrete mathematical problem and how to uh, actually output, how to compute uh, the vector w and the slacks ti that will, um, that, uh, that solve this optimization problem. So how that minimize this cost function subject to these constraints. So I do not have time to enter into the details of how, how this is actually done, but we do have efficient algorithms. I mean, for this specific problem, there is actually efficient algorithms to compute the optimal W uh, in uh, very fast. In fact, for very large number of images in very high dimensions. Okay. Uh, I will not tell you exactly how, how this is done, but actually when uh, preparing this lecture, I have uh, ran this algorithm uh, on, uh, on a specific uh, data set. So uh, I will tell you the results. Um, so what I have done is that I have collected uh, 4,000 images. So, okay, I did not go and collect them myself and ask 4,000 people. Uh, there are certain data sets online that I can download for this problem. So I took um, 2,000 images of ones and 2,000 images of fives. Okay, so that's a total of 4,000 images. I have written this optimization problem. I used a certain algorithm to solve it. And okay, this gave me a certain vector w and uh, the slacks ti, but the slacks ti, I don't really care about them now. So I just take the vector w and what I do is I evaluate my vector w on what we call on a test set. Okay, so I take 4,000 now unseen images, or you can take even more unseen images. And I, um, uh, so these are unseen images, but I know uh, what their correct uh, class is, whether it's a one or a five. I compute the inner product with W, I look at the sign, and if it's correctly classified, I say that's good, and if it's not correctly classified, I say it's bad. And then um, it turns out that uh, this vector W that I computed by solving this optimization problem correctly classifies 3,864 um, uh, instances of these 4,000 unseen images. Okay, so that's an error rate of 4%, which is actually very good for such a simple, um, uh, uh, for, for such a simple classification model, okay, linear classification model. So, um, so nowadays, uh, so linear classification is already something that works pretty good in practice in, in, in many situations. Uh, for problems that are more sophisticated, let's say I don't work with uh, 28 by 28 images, but I work with much larger images and so on, one needs much more sophisticated models and uh, that are based on nonlinear decision boundaries, meaning that um, uh, the boundary that will separate the ones from the fives is not a line anymore, but is going to have some curvature. Okay. Um, and uh, this is typically based on some nonlinear functions. And, and nowadays, neural networks are, are an extremely, extremely popular choice. Um, but I just want to emphasize that the geometric point of view of having a high dimensional space and trying to find a boundary, a certain function that will separate two regions is exactly the same. The conceptual uh, idea is the same. Okay, so now you have, you essentially um, understand how uh, uh, um, the main ideas underlying uh, uh, things like Google image search and, and, and so on. Let me just conclude by saying that uh, because all of this, uh, I mean, all these constructions are based on um, 
uh, geometry in high dimensions, uh, when doing any mathematical analysis of these systems, one needs to be aware that there are certain phenomena in high dimensions that are not, um, that are not uh, um, clearly seen in two and three dimensions. Okay, some uh, very counterintuitive phenomena ha happen in high dimensions, uh, things like concentration of measure and so on, and one needs to be really aware of this um, when, analyzing, um, when analyzing these systems, but these can actually have very concrete uh, implications about these, these machine learning systems that, that we are learning. Um, and this is actually a whole area of research on its own. I, and it's a very exciting area of research in, in mathematics at the intersection of mathematics of uh, geometry and, and mathematics of information and, and, uh, and machine learning. Okay, so, so this concludes my talk. Thank you for listening. I hope you, uh, this was a useful talk and, um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs>